Bookstrap Low Content Book Wizard. My name is Ron Pumphrey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this awesome tool for creating low content books. So as you can see, I'm actually already logged into my uh, dashboard. And you see there, first lovely little button there is the add new book. This is where your uh, details about the book that you've created will be found and there'll be a lot more information in here once we've actually created the book and saved as a PDF or as a uh, PowerPoint. So let's go and add a new book. This immediately brings up our wizard and with the drop down we have all these different book sizes according to Amazon KDP. So you can select the book size that you want to use or do. I'm just going to randomly pick one, seven by nine, and we click on next. In here we have sections. This is to help you add more variety to your kids activity book or to whatever book you're doing, whether it's a journal or notebook or, I don't know, planner. Um, yeah, whatever you're doing. So. I'm going to do this uh, create a kids activity book so the first thing I'm going, going to do in here is I'm going to mark it as an introduction. I'm not going to worry about putting the images in just at the moment and then this one here could be um, all about my activities. And then we'll have in here, um, oh, I don't know what we've got. I'll start off with putting some something in here for the actual activity. So let's say uh, learning my maths. And then we'll have a section in here for writing my numbers and then the next section will have uh, what should we have here maths work sheet so it always pays to actually spend a bit of time to plan your book before you actually get into the wizard as you can see I'm just making things up as I go so it's very slow uh, maths worksheets. Let's put a fun section in here. You know, um, fun time. You know, kids have to be rewarded for doing, you know, do, oops, doing all their hard work up here to learn stuff. So now we'll put a fun time in there. And then in this section we'll have um, certificate. Oops, certificate. Uh, achievement. How's that? Yeah, we don't need an all in capitals. Achievement. And then you might possibly want to have something about the author so that you can have this section um, with, you know, it could be a call to action, you know come to my website and get more free stuff whatever now all these things you're going to be putting into this book have to be uh, images so they're either going to be PNG or JPEG uh, images that you've actually created uh, for your book now I'm quite happy that uh, just for this demo I've got enough sections in here so now we're going to go and put some images in uh, so I don't actually have a, an introductory ready, so I'll just put Chauncey's uh, photo in there. Again, I don't have anything done up for all about my activities because I just pulled that out of my, out of my head what, what that was. So I'm just going to put another image in here. Now, learning my mouse, I do have that done. Chauncey, we have Chauncey Mouse uh, learning that 
let's go with this one here. Now, to upload all those, I'm just uh, holding the right mouse button down, dragging across and above the images, and then just click on open or load. Hopefully my internet connection is not playing up as bad as it was yesterday. I could only get uh, two images at a time. So this looks like it's going to work okay for all 10. And it depends on just how much stuff, um, how intense the images are. Okay, well that worked good. So let's go to writing my numbers. So the more stuff you have on the images, then it may take that little bit longer. Okay, so I'm using J, uh, PNGs because parts of the back background are actual transparent. So I want whatever is in the background for the book to be shown. And I'll, I'll we'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that part. Well, that's good. So now maths worksheets. So I'm going to do the same thing. Go back to Chelsea's worksheets. And we'll go. Now these are a lot more intense with the stuff on me. So it might. Uh, seem to be going up okay. Well, that's good. Well, we're going to check on that so as well, so we're good. All right, so fun time. What are we going to do? We're going, going to do, uh, how about fun time uh, with mazes? So I'll now go back into here to Shopsy mazes, mazes, 10 of them. Now you'll see here now that I put these uh, fun time with mazes, you can either add in the um, solution straight after. The only trouble with that is that it'll actually put the, the solution immediately after the uh, first puzzle. I like keeping them separate. Now to do that, I haven't got a section for this, so I'm going to actually add a new section. Going to put in there. Oops, where's fun time with mazes? We want to copy that. And then we want to go down here. And then we'll put solutions. And then we can actually drag and drop this up underneath the mate. Where is it? Fun with mazes. Maybe I've gone one too many. Oops, I've gone way too far. Okay. Alright. Fun with mazes. Here we go. Now we go in here. Go get the solutions. Do the same thing. Upload all 10. Let's hope it does that. I know I've been hoping a lot because that's yesterday trying to do this video and my internet connection absolutely sucked. All right, we're good there. All right, so now we'll go and get the Certificate of Achievement. This is something that uh, when I was talking to my eldest daughter, she's actually involved in early childhood. She thinks this is an absolutely brilliant idea uh, because it's just a way of making sure that the child uh, keeps interested in learning because oh wow I've just finished this and I've got a certificate and they're, they're pretty proud of that. Okay so all about uh, author section again I don't have that uh, anything done for that so I'm just gonna throw in another weird. Okay so once again I don't have anything uh, created for about the author so I'm just gonna put in the old monkey uh, and at the end of the day what I wanted the whole point of this demo is to show you uh, 
uh, how to use the sections and what the book will look like when it's uh, when you go into the book previewer. So I'm pretty happy with the way things are set out here. So we're just going to click on next and that takes us into the book preview. So the neat thing here is we can add a footer and we can also add a page, page number. So what I like to put in here is a copyright notice. So we're going to quickly type this in 2020 and I'm going to put this uh, Learning with Shanti, and we'll put the website URL, which is Scoobum, and that's just my books spelled backwards. Okay, so now we've done that. We've got the uh, page numbers added. We can go through and have a look at how the uh, book is uh, set up. But just before we do that, uh, the other thing that's very handy is being able to resize uh, the image and to reposition it. Now, I know there's uh, a few things going on with the image position. This is, after all, in alpha, uh, so it has been uh, reported, but at the moment, we're going to put this, check the uh, top middle button, and what that does is it shifts the photograph closer to the top and centers it as well. Now, you see all these uh, photos actually uh, fit the page quite well. Um, when we come over to these ones here, they look pretty good here. If we wanted to leave more space at the bottom for argument's sake, we don't really need to do it with these images, but let's say we want to reduce the images by 80%. So that's not working either. Okay, so that's going to be another bug. It was working yesterday. But anyway, so what would this do is normally um, reduces the image by 80%, so you can actually see it working. Uh, so one must be in there doing something today because it was working yesterday. So we'll just carry on. And you'll see that these are the different sections here. The beginning of the book, section two, three, four, up to section eight. And if we carry on through here, we can see how the book is shaping up. Quite good. Excuse the pounding upstairs, but my brother is doing some alterations. <laughs> so, you know, it's not me uh, banging myself on the head. Right, so that looks pretty good. If we were doing uh, a coloring book, you could uh, click this button here and it actually adds a page after, a blank page after all the pages. So you can see that's uh, putting it in there, uh, you know, blank page after each one. With this particular book, we don't need it. So I'm going to remove the uh, blank pages and we're gonna click on next. And this is where we can name the file. So in this case, this is going to be Chauncey, uh, forgotten the book size. So let's go back to have a look, seven by 10. Because what I like to do is uh, put that in there as an indication. So Chauncey, my naming convention is simply Chauncey. So I know the book, seven, seven, 10 is the book size. And we want the number of pages in the book, uh, which is approximately, 63. So, um, go back up to here. 63. And we're going to get the uh, PDF file created. So we just click on next. And hopefully we're not waiting until Christmas. Must be my internet connection again because normally this is so so fast. All right, so it did actually take a little bit longer than normal, but that's okay. So it comes up with download your book, and you can see down in the uh, down the bottom there it says Shanti 71063 PDF. So we can do, download the book from here. 
or we can wait until we've actually uh, generated the PowerPoint one and then go into our dashboard um, to see to download it from there as well so I'm going to go to uh, PowerPoint and we should be able to just click next and have that generated and it's done that a lot quicker which is really good and again as I said you can download from here or seeing we've created the PDF and the PowerPoint we can come up here to go to our dashboard and you'll see that the book name was Shotzi 71063 we use nine sections 37.86 megabytes is the book size in here I'm, I'm getting I want to put another uh, notation in here for book pages so rather than having to go back and forth uh, we can actually see the exact number of pages in our book which is very helpful when we're uploading this to KDP so here we go here's the PDF so let's uh, right click you can just click on it and download but I like to save the link as or save as and then save that to my computer Right, now that the uh, PDF has come down, we shall click on the PowerPoint. I'm going to do the same thing, save link as. Just gives me the ability to also save where I want to by passing my uh, download folder that I have set up. So I'm going to save that. Well, that's coming down a lot quicker than the PDF. Absolutely awesome. Okay, so now let's go and have a look inside the, the PowerPoint presentation. Right, of course we're going to, going to be opening up in Enable Editing. And I'm going to bring up the bottom part of the... Oops, that's not it. How about if I do this? everything bring it up to the top of the video down to the bottom of the video and we'll increase this okay so here's my introduction that would have been oh so it has worked it's brought this up to the very top okay I uh, don't think it's actually oh well, yes it has it's uh, reduced the images by 80% so that's something I'll have to report to one that uh, it's not actually doing it in the book preview but in the PDF and PowerPoint it's working so that's fantastic okay so this actually allows your user to scribble or do whatever they want underneath the, uh, the, the images you put in there um, okay so this is a bit too close to the top line so that's okay we can um, get uh, that adjusted as well so this is this as you hopefully you realize this has been uh, an alpha test so uh, there are things that will be corrected eventually and so we're going to scroll down writing my numbers um, this is good I love this it's so simple so quick and there's the mazes and there's the answers about the author I'm just a bit of a monkey <laughs> oh, and there's the certificate fantastic so that's the PowerPoint now let's go have a look at the PDF of course I, I wouldn't be too quick on actually creating the PDF straight away because if you want to make any adjustments uh, it's preferable to do it in your PowerPoint slide as opposed to the PDF. But it still looks really good. This is, uh, I'm very happy with this. Great stuff. All right, well that's, um, I'm gonna come back in another video because there's a, a trick with this that I want to show you with um, Japanese puzzles. Now this is not being created specifically for Japanese puzzles but if you're only wanting to put one puzzle per page and one solution per page 
then this is the, the goods to use. So we'll end this video. It's up to 20 minutes, so that's probably long enough for you to be listening to my voice, and we'll come back in video number two. So thanks for listening and watching, and my name is Ron Pumphlet, and I'm out of here. Catch you later. Bye for now.